<laughs> All right. Woo! Uh, sorry, guys. Um, yeah, I fell asleep. <laughs> oh boy. Uh, yeah, that's uh, that's a thing that happened. Um, so uh, yeah, my apologies to everybody. Let me get the mic over here. And, uh, and yeah, let's, uh, let's get the show on the road. If, uh, if everything is kind of working. And, um, do, 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 do. Just waiting for Jesse uh, because obviously we both managed to be as professional as possible right now. Uh, so, mm -mm 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 -hmm. everyone can hear me, right? Just making sure. Let's make sure that everything here is right. All right, let me do this. And we'll get started. Ugh. So guys, what's going on? Um, long time no see for anyone that was on the channel earlier and um, was part of the happy hour. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, we'll see you guys there. Uh, well, I, I guess on the channel again tomorrow on three o'clock p.m. And uh, yeah, so um, last week I'd asked everyone to go on to our Facebook and vote on a bunch of bottles um, to blend tonight. Um, a couple people voted, and. Uh, a lot of people didn't, but it's okay. Um, let me just make sure that Jesse has the right link for this. And uh, yeah, I'm back, <laughs> uh, Mark. I'm I am back indeed. So. Um, the bottles voted on, um, I said that I was going to blend the top six of the bottles that were voted on, uh, but considering that, um, the top five were, uh, four of the top five were such a strong, uh, flavor profile. And the sixth one, um, was the JP Weiser's dissertation, um, which I don't believe would stand up to all of this. And truthfully, I don't want to use too much of just because of how, um, how, you know, it is essentially like a rare bottle. Now um, I didn't want to, uh, I did not want to waste any of it. Uh, it is a precious commodity, the good Canadian stuff. So, um, so yeah. So, anyways, uh, who's in the chat currently still? Um, considering that I was so, um, so on time. Andrew Spirell, uh, you need to change your says so you are looking at the camera when you talk. Yes, Andrew. Um, I need to change it. I do know. I just have not had the time, uh, to do so. I was kind of smashing a bunch of stuff in. So, yeah, that is a thing that I will be working on. Uh, Caleb, you're in? Yes, you. Um, Greg, Steve, uh, Mark from Still in Canada at the Silver Fox Distillery, uh, Mike from Toronto, Jeffrey Bertones, Jason Patton, and uh, yeah, all right, so 
let's uh oh, and Lisa. Yes, beautiful. Hi Lisa. And uh John as well, John G. Crown is a good Canadian whiskey. Oh John. Oh Johnny John John. Ah, you've been corrupted. You have been corrupted by Rex, I am sure. So the um the five bottles that we have to work with in the blending experiment is the Port Charlotte MCO1, which is a um obviously an Isla, but is a Marsala finished Port Charlotte. Um, so you got that uh sweet umami, garden umami, um peaty, iodiney flavor. The Lagavulin 16, which we all pretty much know, is that very classic Isla profile, um, fairly ashy, um, but because of the age, it has a lot of depth and character, along with the typical ex-bourbon profiles of uh, caramels, vanillas, and the like. Uh, Log 40 cast strength is a good Canadian whiskey. Yes, and there is actually a bottle of that. Um, I believe Dave has a bottle of that for me. If I'm not mistaken. Um, so yeah, so continuing on, bottle number three is the Octomore 7.1, uh, which is a five-year-old um, aged Brugladi. Um, heavily, heavily, heavily peated. Um, Writer's Tears Redhead. Uh, this is, I believe, an X, maturity an X Sherry. I believe it's X Sherry. Olorosa Sherry. And Knob Creek Single Barrel Reserve. Oh boy. So yeah, uh, if I hadn't mentioned it already, um, after the happy hour, I decided to take a bit of a little cat nap while I ate something. I had some pasta, made some tortellini, and uh, immediately laid down and put on some Netflix and I fell asleep. I set three alarms to make sure that I didn't fall, that I didn't sleep through this, and clearly... I did. And Jesse. What's up, my man? What's going on? <laughs> um, I guess we're just all over the place, man. We're, we're yeah, it's, uh, I don't know what happened. Uh, <laughs> I had it done for one o'clock. I, I don't know whether I miss, I don't know. Anyway, sorry. Yeah. We're here now. It, no, no, it's okay. Cause um, um, I was just telling everyone that I took a nap. Oh. <laughs> and that is why. <laughs> And that's why I'm late. <laughs> I like my excuse better. Yeah, your excuse is much, much better. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, the beer episode. Okay, so yeah. Um, all right, so um, I hope everyone likes the background. Try to figure out StreamYard at the same time, too. <laughs> cool background, so, man. Me dig. Yeah. So, um, I was just saying the poll that I did, I took everything, um, the top five with, multi with a multiple uh, vote. The sixth bottle only had one vote on, so I decided to exclude it. And it was a uh, uh, the uh, Canadian that I have that would not this profile would not stand up to any of this that I current that uh, was voted above it. So I went for five bottles instead of the six. Um, so out of the five, Jesse, I'll go. I'll run through it again. I have a Port Char uh, Marsala finished Port Charlotte. I voted uh, for that. Yep, Lagavulin sixteen. Octomore 7.1, Writer's Tears, Writer's Tears Redhead, and Knob Creek Single Barrel. Interesting mix, man. Yeah, it's going to be very interesting. Um, and I don't know exactly where to start. I'm thinking, thinking going with a majority of the uh, Writer's Tears. As... I was just going to say, I feel like that would give you a solid kind of base that's somewhat unobtrusive compared to everything else you've got on the table there yeah everyone voted oh, heavy yeah yeah um now the, the interesting part now is going to be the measuring of everything as um i don't exactly have uh the kind of tools at my disposal as uh as certain professionals all elsewhere on the, the internet have, i.e. you. For anyone that's uh, watching at home, <laughs> these things are freaking awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Not only good for children's medicine. <laughs> ah, yes. 
See, um, as a child, I don't know about you, um, I was just given a spoon and forced it through into my mouth. I said, drink it! Yeah. <laughs> uh, see, I was going to have a shower, man, and sort this mess out. <laughs> Me too, oh my now god. you've got this, yeah, professional as ragtag team going on. Oh, yeah. Uh, uh, what's up, Greg? I see you there, man. Um, the audio is better. I'm assuming you mean compared to when I was an absolute failure last time I was live with, uh, with these guys. I still don't know what's going on, but I managed to uh, restart the computer and start from scratch, and now we're now we're golden. You so see, you're going with the iometer there, Vito. I'm sorry, say it again. Are you going with the iometer? Iometer. What the fuck is that? See, this is why I said it's like the words. What is what is an iometer? Oh, your eyes, an eye meter. Oh my god. <laughs> it's not. It's not technical. It's Muppet talk, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yes, um, I'm going with the iometer. Um, okay, so about an ounce. Ah, uh, yeah. Maybe I'll put a little bit more. Maybe just try to go like an ounce and a half. Uh, you could Sean. use the um, you could use the cap at least, mate, to uh, to make it the same next time, seeing as it's a twist cap. Oh, son of a bitch! I could. Jesse, you're so smart. I'm just not the one on the spot trying to talk and pour at the same time. Dude. <laughs> <laughs> You're massively overthinking this. Yeah, you know, this is what happens. Okay, so this is, is gonna be fun. This is gonna okay. Just looking at what I have. Hmm. Okay, well definitely definitely just a splash. I was talking about this on the, in the happy hour earlier. Like, what is a splash? What is a dash? What is a pinch of something? I mean, there is actually real numbers, yeah. isn't there? I, yeah, um, Caleb was telling me about uh, that a dash is one-eighth of a teaspoon, I believe. Hmm. But really, like, who's going to measure out? Yeah, right. Oh, okay. Here we go, dude. Uh, one splash is one po uh, one fifth of a flow ounce, or five point nine one mils. Did you get that 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 point nine of the last mil there, Vito? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> okay. There's a nice um. That little splash of the Octomore. I'm going to put just a little bit more, actually. Okay, so let's talk about um, why we blend at home. Like, what... what? Obviously, you do a lot of uh, blending um, to do with, like, this, all the stuff that you distill, correct? Uh, I haven't done nearly as much as I should have, dude. The, uh -huh. that, that live stream was probably... That five hours worth of it was probably a roughly about the same amount I've ever done before. Really? And yeah. Interesting. Um, simply because I just, I let it sit in the jars, it ages, it, you know, it keeps sitting on the wood, it keeps getting older, and I keep just assuming it was going to get better. And um, I tend to be more into the geekery of it than the drinking of it. Huh. And yeah, so, it, but it is something I need to do more of, dude, to be honest. Yeah, for sure. So I um, kind of wanted to talk about like... Um, I guess when I when I when I came up with the title "Why and How to Blend Whiskey," um, I was just thinking to myself, like, why, how, how, and why do I do it at home? Like, why? Because mm -hmm. I do do it somewhat often, um, a lot of times just randomly, and I think that's the the fun that I find fr uh, from doing it is just the. A lot of times it's just the experimenting and the freeness that I have while sitting at home to just be able to do random, just, you know, a couple, little bit of this, a little bit of that. Oh, let's see how it comes out. Whatever. Um, a lot of, I, I, I would like the, uh, everyone else at home to like kind of um, sound off on why, if they do blend at home, what's their major motivation? Because um, like for me, it's just, well, I'm here. I have it. Let's see, right? One plus one. 
I think it was uh, it was uh, you that said, uh, or was it earlier? I don't remember. One plus one when it comes to blending doesn't equal two. It like it equals uh, chicken when it comes to <laughs> when it comes that to blending whiskey, right? Yeah, that wasn't me, but I forget who it was. I agree. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's 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 it is not scientific at all. It's literally it's a crapshoot every single time. I mean. It is scientific. It's just that it's too freaking complicated for us to sort of guess what's going to happen ahead of time, right? It's not. It's not simple. Right. So that's sort of what I was kind of yeah. alluding. It's like, like it's it, there is no way of knowing exactly what it will t- end up being. Yeah, and like like that, for example, you may assume that um, you know three parts writer's tears and one part octomore will render a octomore that is, you know, a quarter or a third as PT as the Octomore by itself. But sometimes you get a, a big surprise and things seem to fight with each other in the glass and it, it all come out smelling or even tasting sometimes almost as PT as the Octomore to start with. Yeah. Even at a fifth of the, the volume. It's, um, it's a bizarre thing. <laughs> um, yeah. So I think that everyone should be, should be doing stuff like this at home. Um, a great time to do um, a lot of blending is if, uh, especially nowadays, because I see that a lot of people are doing blind t- tastings, uh, especially in the Ontario, um, in our Ontario uh, Facebook page uh, for whiskey. Um, the last couple of days have been just full of people doing blind tastings uh, with like three or four different whiskeys. Um what I would probably recommend people doing is if you're doing a blind tasting or if you're significant other, or even you set up blind tasting somehow, <coughs> um, and you don't want to drink like, you know, if you, let's say it's a, an ounce each pour, if you don't want to drink all of it, start after the first little bit, after you find kind of like the side of which ones they are and submit your results um, and ask for the, the answers back. If there's stuff left in the, um, in the glasses, that's a, great opportunity to blend a little bit of everything together into one glass um i did that uh, i keep on t- I, i've said this story that i think like five times over the past couple uh week or so um my favorite blend to this date is the first blend i ever made which was i had was tasting side by side the um talisker 10 and lafroy quarter cask and I had just a little bit left of the Lafroy Quarter Cast and a little bit more of the um, of the Talisker Ten. It's about a, th- a three three um, uh, three parts to one part of each, and I ended up just being like, "Ah, fuck it." I put the two together because I was uh, at that point. I was like, "Hey, you know, I figured out the taste profiles between the two." Blah blah blah. blah. I was like, "Ah, whatever." Put the two together, and it ended up being just amazing, just absolutely fantastic for my profile and. Um, I wish I had Talisker 10 t- here today to do it because I have a little bit of quarter cask left, uh, but I don't have any Talisker. But that I, it was just like at the end of a little bit of a small little tasting between the two bottles. And I was like, ah, put them together. <laughs> yeah. I mean, anytime you've got a glass that, or like you say, if you end up with multiple different things, right? Maybe you're doing, you're wanting to do a, a flight of different Laphroaig products or you know, there's different products from the same distillery. You're going to line up three different glasses and pour three of them. You're going to taste them next to each other. And then you've got a little bit left over. Anytime you have something left in the bottom of your glass that, you know, isn't just there to drink, it's a great opportunity to just mess with it. Yeah. And I think, I think I can't remember who it was that said it earlier on in the chat it was just the, just the good old college try. Just give it a nudge and see what happens. You know, mm. I, I mean, that's what it is to me. And, Probably, to be honest, I've probably messed around with just blending random commercial things together more than I have my own products. Mm-hmm. And I guess it's, it's it... always carry on. No, no, go, go, go. And I was just going to say, it's just, it's like, it's just the idea of maybe I'll find another flavor that I haven't had before that'll lead me to look for a different whiskey that I haven't thought of buying before, or you know, whatever it happens to be. Yeah. Um. So. Um, the little bit of the Octomore that I put into the writer's series base, um, on the nose, it's still very distinctively writer's tears, but there's that sort of, uh, green, brined green 
uh, olive note mm. that I usually that, that I get you that I get always from the Octomore, and a little bit of like that uh, sort of ashy campfire smoke coming through. Mm-hmm. But it's still distinct, uh, very much still. You could tell the the base is writer's tears, but down the taste, the Octomore is pretty much completely overridden everything minus the Oloroso. Oh wow, really? Yeah, That's the Ol- interesting. The Oloroso is still very much present, but I'm not picking up almost near of anything else from the uh, the base of the writer's tears. It's make it makes for a very interesting um, smell to taste. Cause like every time, you know, you taste something and it's different from the nose. So it's, it's that, it's that l- little bit of extra sherry on the nose that kind of fools you when you're, when you're drinking. Yeah. I always find those sort of things interesting when the, not necessarily good or bad, just interesting when the nose is completely different to the, to the taste. Yeah. It actually so compl- a- carry on. It, it, it complements each other. They, they they've complemented each other, given that they're very much on the op- two on the op- on the opposite end of the spectrum. Oh, really? It's not fighting against each other as an overall sp- experience. No, okay. like a little bit of that 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 uh, sherry um, that sherry comes through on the on the palate, kind of complements all of, all, all of the intensity that that you're tasting from the Octomore. That then reversely on the on the nose, um, you're still getting that like sort of butteriness uh, mm. and and malt and soft malt maltiness that um, that's kind of complementing in with the with the with the salty uh, olives and smoke. It's very. That's an interesting. I've I've never thought of it as salty olives. Mm-hmm. I'm going to have to go and have a dig around on some things that I have. That's a, a nice way to disguise, describe it. Cause quite often like the salty or briny, it just doesn't quite, doesn't quite get you there. You know? <laughs> yeah. No, I got you. Yeah. It's uh, uh, that's one of the first uh, things that I noticed from the Octomore is uh, that olive and it's in the 7.1, it was, it's green olives. And if my memory serves correctly in the 8.1 Octomore, it turned into black olives. Hmm. Interesting. Uh, for those of you that are asking, I'm drinking water. <laughs> like I said, I um, we we sh- I showed up quickly, and I need to. You're right, Mark. I need to get back to the still after after this as well. So, <laughs> I, I'm going to keep myself uh, keep myself sober for this one. Shout out yeah. to uh, to Prescott for anyone that's anywhere near there in the chat. So I'm going to put in a little bit of the Knob Creek. Hmm, interesting. I think it was about half an ounce or so. We're not going to be able to remake this if it turns out to be fantastic. And you know what? I'm okay with it. <laughs> hmm. So let that sit for a little bit. Um, so what's going on, man? Um, how was your weekend? Ah... Uh... They're all blurring in together, dude. Everything's yeah. about the same for me at the moment. Um, there was a the lot of videos is... that uh, that came out uh, this weekend of uh, you, you and your daughter and whatnot. Oh, yeah, she's hilarious. We started uh, <laughs> too cute. Yeah, we started some sourdough action together, so I'm looking forward to to getting that up and kicking and making some bread. And um, I'm sure some of that will get pitched into something that goes through the still at some point in time. I don't know exactly how that's going to work, but. Hmm. Yeah, what about you, dude? You going mad yet? How's the How's the new place? I keep forgetting you just moved. Yeah, uh, it's okay. Uh, it's getting there. It's uh, yeah. It just I had to get out of the house today. I went for about a four hour walk this morning, uh, just around the neighborhood. I went down down. Uh, I'm right beside a river, the Humber River. Um, nice. So I I went down to the to the river, walked down the bank for a bunch. Um, went to visit some family, uh, just kind of away from the, uh, from the, from the sidewalk and, um, did a, uh, went to, to a small little bakery, picked up, uh, picked up some pasta and some, uh, some, some, uh, other things to make, uh, to make dinner tonight and, uh, then walked back, 
took about four hours. Nice. And uh, yeah, no, but other than that, it's like it's like every time I walk into into my bedroom and even into the into the hallway, it's like the living room area of our of the apartments cleared out finally, which is good. But there's still a bunch of boxes in the hallway that we have to go through, and then all, all like in my room, all the big stuff is up, like the bookcases and the desk mm-hmm. and everything like that. But then it's all the small little things that you look at and you're just like. I really don't want to go through all of it. <laughs> yeah. I feel you, man. Yeah. yeah. But that's uh, why I end up with boxes still sitting around in six, seven months time. Yeah. I'm, I really don't want to see the boxes anymore. <laughs> uh, it'll be, it'll, those, they'll, they'll be gone. I'm hoping to be completely done by the end of the week. Nice. Um, but, uh, yeah, otherwise it's, it's great. Um, you know, have a great view, uh, like have kind of looking out into the into the city, and morning sun is fantastic. I've I've spent the last thirteen years uh, in a basement, um, so having you know the morning sun to uh, wake up to in the morning is just um, it's nice. It's a, it's a nice yeah, change. Dude. You feel like a human, a little bit. <laughs> there's just there's just a little a little like uh, an essential piece right here that I'm missing uh, to really feel human because I'm a I'm a I'm a hard uh, miserable human being that has no soul uh, <laughs> and hates everybody. So <laughs> besides that, That's... I feel I, yeah I feel I feel like a human being. <laughs> How's it going, man? Is it evolving as it sits a little? Yeah. So I added the no- the Knob Creek. So now you're getting a lot of that peanut um, flavor. A lot more sweetness has, has entered the fray on the nose. You're still getting a fair amount. If you move back, you're getting a lot, a lot. You're noticing that the Octomore is still there. Up close, you're not getting as much of the peatiness, but you're getting a lot more base olive. Like if you were to take olives out of the brine and then move the brine out of the way. You're, mm-hmm. And you're left with just like the the residual sort of slight brininess, but the olive itself is coming through um, much more prominently. And still, that uh, that writer's tears is still there, which is good. You're still getting that that uh, oloroso. So yeah, the nose has actually come together fairly nicely. Um, uh, Mark is asking, you know, is it a Mark or a Lisa? I don't know who's on which which uh, nah. chat, uh, thing because I know Silver Fox is one and still it is the other. Um, I don't know if Mark's on that, but uh, do you have any bourbons in stock, Jesse? No, I very very rarely buy any bourbon just because it's it's cheaper for me to buy uh, Scotch most of the time here, and I tend to prefer that more. Uh, so that's what I lean towards. Oh, I lie. I've got some, um, uh, what is it? Gentleman Jack or something. Just like a little bit of a, a heel of a bottle sitting there that I haven't really polished off. Mm. It's pretty hard to, to justify buying, um, you know, when, when something like Jack Daniels is almost as much as a bottle of Lefroy 10 half the time. Oh like, my God, I hate you, know, you so much. I don't know. It's, it's not because the the Lafrig's cheap it's because the the bourbon's expensive that's i mean it's both it, it's coming from as far away from as each other so well how yeah. how much is a bottle of Lafrig 10 there are because what's okay hold on before you answer that what is your dollar compared to the australian dollar uh almost one, around... one. It's oh, okay. about, so yeah so then, it's about me... 60 cents to the usd at the moment okay so we're about we're so uh you're very close to what we what we are what we're at in canada so Oh, okay. What, I what, the, what, yeah, what does uh, what does all the Freud ten go for? Um, I to be honest, normally I'll just there's a couple of online retailers that I buy from, mm-hmm. and I just wait and see what their special is. Okay. Uh, both because it's easier to justify it if it's cheaper, and of also because they actually cycle through a really large, crazy range of different things. So if I just mm-hmm. shop the special, I don't have to think about it. You know, just see what's there. But um, maybe sixty bucks I get it for sixty five. Fuck it. The um the quarter think, cask or the or the uh, select is probably like fifty nine sixty. Yeah, um, I'm fairly certain that both the ten and the quarter cask are over eighty. They'd normally be. They'd oh well, I'll look right now. 
Um, they normally be about 75, 80 bucks, I think. Um, but then, you know, like for a bottle of, um, a bottle of even like Maker's Mark or something is probably about 70, 80 bucks as well. Jeez, that's that's expensive. I think it in Ontario, I think it's 40, 45. I think it's about 45, 48 dollars. Uh, Maker's Mark. Oh no, here we go. Maker's Mark one liter is uh, 60 bucks. Okay. The Maker's 46 is 78. Um, but the same thing, like I just, I, I mean, I just enjoy scotch more most of the time or single mm. malts more well you know with 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 yeah. with, with scotches you're getting more than four flavors right yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh yeah lafroig 10 right now is 69 that's like the standard price oh it's quarter cask i need some i'm almost out of entirely out of everything yeah me too I'm down to uh, I'm down to about fifteen bottles because I decided that it would be a good idea to empty out the other twelve because I was almost at I was almost at thirty and I was like oh well you know a bunch of the bottles are near the end let me just go on a on a mass killing spree and finish off all those uh, near empty bottles and now I'm I left saw a lot of photos from you dude yeah now I'm uh, now I'm suffering because I was like shit all my varieties gone. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah well now i'm left with the isla which is fine because i like isla and uh uh and a bunch of like just miscellaneous uh two or three irishes a couple of canadians um and that's pretty, really it yeah I, I mean i think maybe i've got about probably about 10 12 bottles kicking around but though they are almost all bottles that i um I really don't want to drink because I want them as a as a flavor library, like as a reference for yep, right. You know, making stuff or tasting stuff again. Yeah, absolutely. So I think we're down to about maybe three or four bottles that are um you know just there for drinking. Mm-hmm. I pretty much put a halt on the on the on the spend <laughs> when when it looked like everything was going to turn to shit, and I was like, I don't know how we're going to come out of this. So let's stop uh, stop yep. throwing money at whiskey for a little while. <laughs> yep, yep, that's uh, pretty much it. <laughs> Okay, so real quick. So on the nose, uh, I mentioned that, uh, that there's a lot that, that nuttiness comes through. It rounds out uh, some of the sweetness. Right, it's just kind of like like almost like honey drizzled uh, peanuts at this point with that smoke and brine and a bit of that sherry maltiness, which is nice. I'm intrigued that you're still getting anything from the. Rider's tears coming through. Yeah, I think we put we, we put we put enough in there, and we're putting such small amounts of everything mm. else that it, it's it's somewhat holding up. I'm 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 not hopeful when I start adding the uh, the Marsala finish Port Charlotte that anything will happen. That, that oh, your that, goal is literally to get all of those bottles in one glass. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah, I misunderstood. Cool. Yeah, I want to. I want to try and maintain all like something from everything. Mm-hmm. Uh, Andrew, while well, Vito is pontificating on that, I just saw Andrew asking if I've got anything aging. I'm actually surrounded by it at the moment, dude. I've got jars all over the place, still sitting here from when Vito helped me out with that blending. They're, uh, they're all over the place. I don't do enough volume to do barrels. I'll do some mini barrels at some point in time. But um, mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah, and that was fun, the, 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 the long stream that you had. Yeah, dude, we need to figure out a way to be able to do this sort of stuff. Um, this would this would involve a lot of planning. <laughs> we're so and we're great at that. We're allergic to it, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, like get samples. Like I can send samples out to you or something ahead of time and... You know, so we can experience it together. Yeah, it's going to be t- difficult because I, I, I don't know if you sent me anything. I still don't have anything from uh, from you. No, I was supposed to get you a um, a coin and a pin, but I was slack getting your address off you. And then by the time I got the address, everything's in lockdown now. So, ah, oh, okay. I was wondering because because I saw that that uh, that a couple other people had gotten, and I was like, I was like, shit. I was like, I wonder. 
I wonder if uh, if it got lost in the mail. But oh, uh, yeah. dude, I, I need to get your new address off you, obviously. <laughs> yeah, that, that 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 as well. Uh, <laughs> because things were still being delivered uh, to my old address, which is fine because my parents are living there still. Um, but then I was like, I was like, ah, you know, like usually, usually it takes a little bit longer for stuff to get to me than to Brad for some reason. But then when when oh, right. when Jeremy got his, I was like, what the. There, that's not right. I'm supposed to get it first. Oh yeah, dude. Yeah, that was crazy. That took that took almost a month to get from from New Zealand to Australia. After like after I put it in the post box. That's, that's, that's ridiculous. Nuts. Yeah, things are all up shit creek right now. I've still got a I still got a few things coming from. Um, there's a care package coming from uh, a certain someone in, in Texas that hasn't got here. There's uh, some. Yeah, a couple of different products coming from America that have been. I know they're in in the country, but they haven't. You know, they've they've been in the country for three weeks or something and haven't got here yet. So, mm. uh, so I'm, gonna, Mark, I'm, gonna let, I'm well, gonna let that sit uh, sit real quick, just because it's um, it's it, it needs it needs a little bit of a timeout right now. Oh, is it all? Is it all come out to fight? Has it? Uh, yeah, the Lagavul and um, has claimed dominance. <laughs> asserted its manliness over yeah. everything else. My 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 Glen Karen has uh, spotted a mustache. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll see we'll see we'll see what happens uh in a in a couple of minutes with uh with this. Was that the nose that or Yeah, it was the, the nose. Yeah, right. Um yeah, dude, when when we get off here, make sure you flick me your new address and I'll I've got a I got a big old spreadsheet of things that I need to send people to because people are still buying stuff off the store too and I can't I can't do anything about it. So I'm going to yeah. have to do like two or three days straight of just packaging things up when everything opens up. Um, Mark, uh, flick me an email, dude. Yeah, if you can get some samples down to me. I mean, it's fine for me. Just stick them in the post and send them here. That works for me. I know it's uh, sketchy at your end, but if um, if that works out, yeah, I'll um, email me. Email me, man. So it's... Um, I'm surprised that a small amount of of the lug of villains taken over, especially with the Octomore in there and the Knob Creek, because I would have thought they'd be quite um, different flavors that would layer, you know, not bury each other. Yeah, it's um, it's simmering down just a little bit. Just a little bit. Have you had bit. a taste yet? Since you no, I haven't there. had a taste yet. I'm just I want to I want to I want to wait until it's completely settled in, because I don't want, I don't want to end up with 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 um, tasting too much that it kind of throws my palate off. Yeah. Um, right. And also like diminishing how much I have uh, left, so that when I'm pouring, it's like I'm not over pouring the well. Again, there's only one more thing left to do is the uh, the marsala. <laughs> But um, yeah, and this is key when 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 blending. I know, and we mentioned it on your channel is to be patient and let it just mellow out, right? You got to let 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 everything kind of marry together um, and uh, settle into each other because uh, there are the oils and all of that uh, sort of uh, fancy worded things that need to uh, kind of melt together. Right. Yeah, I'm sure there's a, a more scientific way of saying it, but yeah, I mean, you've got a whole lot of different solutions of things that you're throwing in together, and then the the thing that was in solution in solution A may not be able to stay in solution when you put them together. You know, something about that new solution, the different ABV or whatever, may force things out of solution that are now going to sit on the top of the glass, or you know, they're just going to need time to come together again. Yeah. And I mean, the, the obvious example for that for me is taking something, you know, sometimes even a not so heavily peated Isla whiskey and putting a couple of drops of water in it and then suddenly it's a peat bomb. I mean, that it just that really highlights it to people if they haven't experienced it before. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Um, oh, well, Swami's in the chat. Uh, Sup, Osama bin Pixie, who you, you bastard. <laughs> 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 you bastard. <laughs> All right, let's let's uh, let's take a look at what's going on in the glass now. Can 
Okay, the Octomorphs come back. <laughs> the Sherry, the the Oloroso is uh, oddly just just there. Hmm. Because that's been pretty um, consistent since the beginning, hasn't it? Yeah. Um, there's a, such a multi sweetness, and it has to be still be coming from the writer's tears. But that sweetness could also be coming from the the bourbon itself. I'm not picking up on too much of a nuttiness as much as I am now. Like a walnut. Like a, a, like a, the meat of the walnut. Mm -hmm. Instead of the peanut you were getting earlier? Yeah. Kind of evolved into a little bit more of a dry... Dry waxiness. Right, I'm with you. And just uh, and and a bit of the Lagavulin sort of uh, ash, ash and peat. I don't know really how, how best to describe it, but it's just it it. it I, there is the Lagavulin. I just can't. I can't describe the that characteristic nose of the Lagavulin right now for whatever reason, but it, it's it it is distinctively there. Hmm, that's interesting. Okay, the taste. Oh, so oily. <laughs> it's very spiky. Like it's, uh, it, it, there's, it hits you right in the back. It's oily and peppery. Mm -hmm. Which is interesting because I wouldn't necessarily describe anything so far as having a really big pepper by itself. Am I missing anything? Hmm. Radistons, no. no. Knob Creek, no. No. Octomore, no. Not. Uh, what, else, what am I? Not, not as, and the Lag of Wolden 16. Not. Oh. Um, yeah. th they're. Neither. None of these. Obviously. Well, obviously the Irish and the Bourbon don't. But the Lag of Wolden and the Octomore, you can sometimes. I think with the Octomore, I think you can get a little bit of the pepper. But this is really intense. Hmm. This is more more than uh, what's what's the what's the phrase? This is more than more than the components combined. Yeah, right, right, right. I don't. I there's a phrase for that. More than um, the sum is greater than 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 the than the parts or something. I don't know. Yeah, greater than the addition of the parts or something like that. Yeah, some, 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 something like that. that. Yeah, yeah, we can't talk nicely no words and no. things no yeah. <laughs> that's not that's not what we do we, we just we're, we're just here to drink um okay to drink my water i want some water so badly right now <laughs> man i i woke up i woke up at what did i message you like at 803 or 804 uh yeah you messaged me at about i think about six minutes past 12 my time and, and i was like, like yeah I'm, i'll be there in an hour dude that's cool i'll see you soon yeah <laughs> like, uh, no like, ah, shit. <laughs> <laughs> Did you think I was like hanging out waiting for you? Yeah, I was like, oh, I was like, because there are people in the in the chat waiting. I was like, ah, oh, shit, motherfucker. <laughs> oh, I forgot how good this this uh, Marsala Port Charlotte is. Is that a new uh, bottle that you just opened, dude? I didn't see you. I heard it. Um, yeah. So I opened up the Marsala Port Charlotte. How much do I have? I have about. Two thirds of a bottle left. Um, yeah, this is this stuff is really freaking good. I haven't had that. I mean, anything anything Port Charlotte. I've yet to meet a Port Charlotte I don't enjoy. Okay, just a little splash of that, and see what happens. And let that just marry together real nicely. Um, are you a Netflix guy? Me? Yeah. yeah. Um, well, I would be if. But there's not not a whole lot of time kicking around left. Mm. We uh, we did watch. Um, how? What did we watch? 
I can't remember the name of it. Dear Lord. Um, while I'm trying to remember the name of that, we also watched Midway finally, which was mm. really good. That was excellent. Um, the dude from, it's the guy from uh, Breaking Bad and uh, Chris Rock. Um, um, the dude's, uh, not, Aaron oh, not Chris Paul. Rock. Um, not Chris Rock. Um, Jesus, Jesse. I'm just going to stop talking. <laughs> Ke- is it Kevin Hart? Yes. Thank you. <laughs> um, but yeah. wait, wait, um, Oh God. What's, what's the guy's name? Not Aaron Paul. No, the old, the guy. Oh, geez. Why Brian, can't that never, oh, no. uh, yeah. Brian. Cr- Cran- Cranston. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. The two of them, uh, Brian's like a, um, quadriplegic ends up looking after him. That was a very, very good movie. Excellent movie. I thoroughly suggest you watch it. Um, other than that, man, I haven't had much on the, on the go really. Oh, Avenue five. That was kind of funny. What about you? Um, I finished the Castlevania. That is good. Yeah, I finally I finished that. the third the third season. The that third has, season? yeah, third uh, season. yeah, I think so. That has that has absolutely no right to be anything other than trash, and yet I thoroughly enjoyed it. It was so good. Uh, they've done a good job with it. I agree, man. Um, yeah, so I finished finished that. Very much looking forward to the next season. Whenever it's locked whenever. in, eh? I think it's it's coming. Yeah, yeah, like it is happening. Eh? Yeah, yeah. Cool. It's just a matter of like, well, is COVID going to delay everything? Because it's delaying a lot of things animated wise. Like even like all like a lot of the anime that I watch, um, two of the shows have now been put on hiatus because uh, hmm. they because uh, now Japan's uh, put out a state of emergency, and um, so a lot of the animation studios are being shut down. Yeah, wow, crazy. So, I'm um, I'm gonna go out on a limb and just uh, a lot of the, especially with you know you see it with movies too a lot of the productions are being shut down um, or like brought to a halt because you know if they've been filmed and it's just in post production you know a couple of people working from re- remotely from home can probably take care of it but like it you know all the filming and all of that stuff is is on hold so mm. uh, but yeah so finished uh, finished that. Um, I started watching this uh, this series called Bruise Brothers. Um, it's a, have you seen? I saw it? a I, thumbnail. I saw yeah. a little thumbnail pop up for it. I didn't watch it. Is it good? Yeah, it's it's. Have you ever watched The League? It's a um, it's a no. show. It's it's a fantasy football centric show. But it's like it's so much more. It's like that's just the backdrop, and it's just literally, um, just everyday dudes. And just mm. outra- outrageous shenanigans that they put themselves through because of fantasy football. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> it is so good. It, it's right up our alley. Like our, the chat that we have, it's right up our alley. Um, oh, let's have to check it out, man. Yeah, it's it's so. It's, I don't. It, I think that's on Crave. Um, it's oh, not it's on, not it, Netflix. It's not on Netflix. Not no. the league. Um, but I think the I think it's the same creators that made this show, Bruise Brothers. Uh, because there are a couple of uh, similar, like a couple of the actors are kind of like make like an like a, an appearance as you know this whatever. Um, it's got the same sort of vibe. It's just these two brothers um, that start a brewery, and um, one's an obnoxious know-it-all. There's a, ma- a massive snob, a beer, essentially a beer snob. And he's mm-hmm. like, I'm gonna teach, I'm gonna teach you, you know, how to how to how to drink beer. But then he lectures you for two hours. <laughs> um, and then the other one's just like uh, was trained by monks in Belgium on how to make Trappist style beers, and he just, he just he's trying to be German, uh, like German Belgium, and it's just it, it's fun. And then yeah, it's, just, it, it's it's a good time. Watch it, watch it. That sounds it sounds like they've actually like they actually have a connection to the to the craft beer world that they're taking like they they understand the world well enough to take the piss out of it. Yeah. They're not just doing it from the outside. That's pretty. Yeah, cool. and there's a lot of there's a lot of uh, a lot of jabs at like you know like the uh, the IPA movement. It's like oh these, all these yeah, people yeah, they do, you just want to make an IPA, you make it as hoppy as possible, and it's like well <laughs> you know you have to you have to make be true to the beer and make like as as authentic uh, like a like a Belgian style beer as possible. Mm-hmm. 
and it's oh, just it, yeah, sure. it's and it's and it's fairly raunchy too. Um, so if it's, that's that's not up up uh, your alley or anyone in the chat's alley, it's uh, <laughs> it, it, it 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 is it is pretty uh pretty raunchy and disgusting at times, but it's uh it's it's fun. Oh, the other thing I've been watching is the um the animated series of Trailer Park Boys, which is it, amazing. It, it, I I don't know why I haven't come across it. <laughs> so good dude <laughs> nah. it's just, like imagine everything that trailer park boys is but then they're not confined to actually having to be able to film it it's like oh we want to grow weed on the international space station okay cool that's what we're doing because <laughs> like, they, they can just animate it you know? <laughs> it's hilarious <laughs> okay so now that we've have all five in a in a glass and we're pushing about we're right on the cusp of hitting the the main bulbous part. It's nice on the nose. There's no there's no roughness. It's distinctively Isla. Mm -hmm. But then you get a lot of the a bit of the Marsala and a bit of the the Oloroso still there. The Marsala obviously is a little bit more powering. Because you get a lot of that uh, green vegetal um, stem s scent. Yeah. Right, like asparagus, tomato, vine. Then you get a little bit of that, that buttery maltiness and the darker fruits from the Oloroso. The brine... And green olives is still there from the Octomore. And I don't know if I'm getting any more of the bourbon. But the the Lagavulin is still there. This is very interesting. I was not expecting to be able to get all five all five going. Okay. Um, I think the poor Charlotte broke the taste. Oh, really? Like it's just taken over, or yeah. just fragmented it's, everything? No, no, it's 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 taken over. It's 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 like it's you're drinking Brooklady now. Mm. Though you get a bit of the bourbon. Hmm. Yeah, the bourbon is still fairly strong on the taste. But the majority of up front is Brook Laddie. Brook, Brook Laddie to me is interesting because I get the, um, normally the, the brine and the salty iodine -y sort of stuff tends to be kind of a finish to me in Isla. But the, especially in the classic Laddie, that comes way up front. Mm -hmm. You get it really early. So I'm sort of, I mean, if that's kind of what's going on, you may be, you're masking up the end with the other Isla and the beginning with the Brook Laddie profile and just sort of turning everything into PT brininess. Well, it was sort of inevitable um, with what was, <laughs> with what was voted, with what was voted on, right? Three of the, right, yeah. three of the four being um, peated, two of the four being heavily peated, one of the four being extremely peated. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the P I was expecting, but maybe not the intensity um, at where it's at. Um, how can I fix this? Do I add I more mean, writer's tears? I was just going to say, maybe some more writer's tears or some, some maybe to do like another, do two to two to one an addition of the writer's tears and the knob creek mm, okay mind you, you're still getting some of the knob creek aren't you i'm getting a bit of, i'm getting a fair amount of it on the taste um but i think i think the the little bit more writer's tears might help mellow out um the iodine and the black pepper mm. okay that's enough of that so 
Uh, we've been going for about an hour, so I don't want to. I don't want to take up too much more of your time, Jesse. So, oh, you good, um, man. I got another half hour if you want it. Easy. I mean, you did budget for one o'clock, right? So. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I don't know where we can. I I don't know where the the where the mix up was because it was like eight o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time to your time. I don't should've, even know, dude. Should it maybe? Should might have might have been one, but I don't know. Maybe I was looking at the wrong. Does is New Zealand have multiple time zones? Uh no, but we have switched um, uh, from daylight savings not that long ago. Yeah, it was one o'clock. It was one o'clock Tuesday, and then eight eight, 8 p.m. for you. Did you start at eight p.m.? Yeah. Oh, you did. Okay. Interesting. <laughs> It's Maybe so that, weird, isn't it? Like, it should be something that simple. It should be easy to work this out. But I mean, it's it's I, it's, it's not. It sucks every time. <laughs> Especially when you're trying to do multiple things. Like, if I'm gonna, you know, if, if I'm gonna put something up live, I try and put out a list of, you know, here are the different times and different time zones for you. And I don't think I've ever got it completely right yet, which is silly. It, I don't know. It should be easy, but it never is. Hmm. So on the nose, it's kind of become writer's tears heavy. Let's sit for another minute or two. Um, but yeah, this is the this is the this is the in, especially when belt blending a bunch of bottles. Um, this is just the intricacy, the, just a lot of intricate detail, patience. Um, just gotta gotta. You know, treat it, uh, treat it like a like a nice lady. You know, go <laughs> go slow, go slow with it. You know, try you know test test the taps. You know, make sure that you know um, nothing's nothing's too rough, and you know, add in a little bit of sweetness and let it sit for a little bit, and then go in with the hard stuff and you know <laughs> test the waters a little bit. I'm gonna get in so much trouble. <laughs> Brad, Brad, Brad's gonna give me a talking to later. What are you doing on the channel? <laughs> okay. Okay, that's not too bad. A lot more butters coming out now. I mean, to be fair, that's what you want from the writer's tears, right? I yeah. would have to imagine the butteriness and the 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 grainy, just the sort of presence of softness to fight back against it, just being an Isla. And all the smoke and iodine and everything's s mellowed out, a little bit pushed back up front. You're getting a lot of the uh, a, a good amount of the oloroso and the butter. Mm -hmm. A little bit of nuttiness, not very much, but it's it's uh, it's pushing. It's now that it's pushed back a little bit of the iodine. Everything else is kind of coming forward a little bit more. Okay, so it is softer, less spiky, a bit less peppery. It's not punching me in the back of the mouth anymore. It's not bad. It's not bad. Hmm. You don't sound convinced though, dude. What's it I, missing? I don't know if it needs more time to just sit. Have you got another needs... glass there, dude? Uh, I do. Why don't you? Oh, why don't you? I see what I see what you're going. Split it. Split it, yeah. And just let let one of them sit for you know because let's face it, you're going to be tempted to mess with it or just keep drinking it. So. <laughs> there we go. Okay, so we'll put that aside. <laughs> okay. Motherfucker! What's wrong? I, 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 I kind of tipped the whiskey, the glass. Oh. 
and I got whiskey all over my iPad and my desk. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Uh, I promise I'm not drunk, guys. <laughs> All right. Do I have any more tissue? No, it's okay. Hmm. A uh, little. I'm gonna do a sp extra splash of the Knob Creek. Uh, boy. Oh, I put a little bit. I think I put a little bit too much, but it's okay. That's what this is all about. Ooh. That's with an upgrade? That's, that's promising. Okay, let that let that mellow out a little bit. Um so earlier today, Jesse, I was doing that uh I had that happy hour. Mm-hmm. And um found out I don't know if I, I I'm fairly certain uh you've seen uh uh, Nathan Clark in your uh, in your chats most likely, but uh, he was yes he was um, he uh, like I put I dropped the Streamyard link in the chat for people to join in and just um, if you had a drink or just want to talk, um, and he he came on on the on the chat uh, just as me and Jeffrey Patron, Jeffrey Patron were talking about making uh, roos, um, not kangaroos but like uh, like bit like um, you know flour and um butter uh oil right like a like a roux sauce mm -hmm. and uh he let us know that he, he used to be he used to work uh, as a chef in a creole restaurant nice so, so we were talking all about it then. <laughs> yeah so we, we were we were uh we spent like a good i don't know easily 30 40 minutes talking about uh food and rest and uh cooking and stuff like that and it was freaking awesome nice i haven't i haven't missed with uh with a lot of that food, I guess, gumbalaya and jumbo, oh, sorry, gum, jumbo, gum. gumbo would be um, about as far, as deep as I've got into that side of things. Yeah. It's damn I got, good food though, man. It's just like, it's just like soul food. It's awesome. Exactly. I made a, I made a gumbo a couple of weeks ago. I want to make a jambalaya. Um, mm. I'm just waiting for... Um, for me and my roommate to figure out on um, figure out an island situation so that there's a lot of room uh, to prep. Yeah, uh, but yeah, the second we get that, that's probably going to be the first thing I do is make a jambalaya because uh, I made a gumbo for the first time and it came out amazing. And I was like, next is a jumbo is a is a jambalaya. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, a, uh, a binging with Babish YouTube video. It must be about six months ago now. Oh, with Je with uh, Isaac uh, Topes, right? Yep. 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 I was like, yep, I'm doing that tomorrow night. <laughs> it was good, man. It was real good food. Yeah, me and Terry were talking about uh, about that when when I found that uh, when I found I, that's the recipe that's the video that I saw, um, and mm -hmm. then I and then I uh, dove a little bit deeper and I found um, this the jump the gumbo specific video that he made on munchies. Oh, nice. And uh, just kind of followed that and uh, it came out amazing. Because honestly, dude, making the super dark roux was the thing that put me off it. Mm -hmm. like every time I came to that. So seeing his technique for doing it, you know, hot and fast rather than messing around for hours. Yeah. Was, yeah. Because he, he like, said, oh, he's yeah, like, he's, that. if you can, uh, you got to respect the roux. You can't, uh, if, if, if you've never made a roux before, uh what, do you, what is this thing you you haven't made a roux before unless you've burnt a roux it's like yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> like yeah i've bur i've burnt many a roux <laughs> i think that knob creek the knob creek definitely just r made the nose so much better oh really yeah it it 
the it rounded everything out. So you get that that dusty mm. sweetness is sort of encapsulating everything now. Still get a little bit of the brine, a little bit of the green olives. And people are weirded out whenever I do that. It's a good way of just clearing out your nose. The the Lagavulin's still there. And that that sort of ex bourbon vanilla peat is still there, and like I said, the green olives from the the briny green olives from the octomore is there. Get enough of that buttery malt from the from the Irish, and just a just a hint of vegetal notes. From the Port yeah, Charlotte, just like kind of the the steamy, the like stems, green, the like, green, ste- the green yeah. stemmy, green stemmy, uh, almost like the vininess that you get in wine. Mm-hmm. That that was it. Yeah, that was it. That it? just it just needed a little bit more bourbon. Nice. Yeah, it brought it brought it brought it back. It's not punchy anymore. You're not you're not thrown for a loop uh, right out the gate with um, the uh, with the iodine and the pepper. Mm-hmm. It's sweet. It's it's sweet and salty, a little bit syrupy, which is interesting. Nice. I, I'm tempted to almost put it. I don't know about custard. Oh, interesting. Can I be convinced of the custard? Because I was leaning towards saying that it's almost like the 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 top like the top of the creme brulee. Oh, okay. Like the, right. The full on myad reaction. Yeah. But then I was like, I was like, I was like, I'm thinking creme brulee. Now I'm thinking of the custard. I'm like, did I, did I, ta- did I taste any custard? So it's more just that like sugar, almost burnt, but not quite there. Super, super dark. I can be convinced of the custard. I think it might just, be, I think that's exactly what I'm tasting is I'm tasting that creme brulee. I could I could see that between the writer's tears and the knob creek actually. Yeah. Like the the butteriness and the not creaminess, but the, the creamy sort of sensation of writer's te- writer's tears, but with the deeper, darker sweetness of the knob creek. Mm-hmm. And then a little of the smoke on top. Yeah, I could see that. It's definitely the the burnt like the burnt sugar top. I'm just, I, I, I don't know if I can convince myself of the custard because it's, it, you want to say custard, but it doesn't taste all the way to custard. Like none of that dairy sort of presence of yeah, custard. Yeah, there's, there's not, it's not that much. Mm. But like, there's, I mean, the but sugar there's, aspect and the vanilla aspect. The sugar and the vanilla and everything. Yes, exactly. That's exactly, that's what it is. It's the vanillas and the sugars, the bit of the butteriness. Is kind of playing you into gearing my, at least my mind, my my, mm. my head towards a custard. So it's like custard, but without the dairy. Yeah, so that's <laughs> a, ve- the, the v- a vegan custard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> my cousin, I was talking to my cousin today, um, and uh, she made vegan pancakes. Uh huh. And then she, um, my uh, my un- my uncle was like. I was like, oh, were they good? And he's like, yeah, you know, like they weren't pancakes, but they were good. <laughs> <laughs> I've just realized, dude, your background is cracking me up. Oh, oh are you looking like, at that? Uh, the math underlined. 
Oh. Right above your head. <laughs> <laughs> Matt. Yeah. <laughs> God damn it. Um, the, I, um, not many people know this. Uh, probably, I probably mentioned this a couple times. Um, I failed math all through high school. Oh, did you? I totally thought you were going to say, I'm low-key like a math savant. Fuck, I wish. <laughs> yeah, my my father is really good at like he's an accountant, so like he, math oh. is like his wheelhouse. Um, and I was never, never good at math, mm-hmm. and it all and it always upset him coming home. And I was like, "Teach me math," and he's like, "Why don't you just understand it?" He's like, "I did," and I was <laughs> like, "Teach me." <laughs> yeah, it's uh, yeah, math wasn't so bad for me, but I've definitely there's definitely a few holes in my. Uh... Spelling and multiplication were the two that, and dates actually, just dates in general suck. I suck at it. I uh, desperately need a toilet break, mate. I will be back in two seconds. All right, very good. Uh, Steve, um, I th- she oh I forget what she said she used. She used. Ah, oh, geez, what did she say? I'll get back to you on that. Um, I'll let, uh, ask me again on the happy hour tomorrow, and I'll get you the answer. Um, but I don't know. I'm not. Uh, there are some vegan things that I'm okay with, but then the others were just like, like, like she made vegan pasta uh, a couple weeks ago. Like, how dare you? How dare you ruin pasta by not make making it with eggs? That's fair enough. I you I I I I clearly I was told and I forgot right away. So that that about sums up uh, sums it up. So uh, welcome back, Jesse. Thank you, sir. Um. So I don't know. Um. Final thoughts on the blending. Took a bit of time, but we got there. Um, I'm I'm kind of happy with the end result. Uh, I'm gonna add a little bit more of the not of the Knob Creek into the other glass that I have, and uh, drink that as well. But uh, otherwise, this was um, considering what we had to work with. This was yeah, a- dude. As soon as I realized that you were planning on getting all of those into one glass, I was like, yeah, it's just gonna taste like generic Isla. Yeah. There's enough variance that uh, though I'd be interested to. I wish my roommate. I'm gonna get my roommate into whiskey because he's actually said he's like I want to get into whiskey. He had a he has a couple of bottles. But he's got like uh, the Jim Beam, uh, Wiser's Deluxe, uh, Crown Royal. I would nothing wrong with that. He's like I want to I want to get it more into it. So I'm, mm. I'm gonna get him. I'm gonna do a, like a, do a, get him into because he had the. What did he have the other night? He had uh, a taste of the Wise, Wiser's Dissertation, which is a Canadian one. And he had a taste of the, I think the Writer's Tears it was. And he liked them both. So I'm going to slowly get him into it and then do this again and see if he can figure out where the profiles are coming from because I can sit here right and be like, Oh yeah, I know I put Port Charlotte. So I should be smelling a little bit of that green. So I'm going to look for that green vegetalness. I put the writer's tear. So I'm going to look for that, uh, that buttery maltiness, right? The knob Creek is very peanut heavy, right? I'm going mm. to look, I'm going to hunt out that peanut. I'd be curious to give this to, to do this again and give it to someone that, doesn't know as much and see if they can pull out the individual ref, um, sort of notes and go from there. Yeah. I think if you were going to do that, maybe cut it down to like three bottles yeah. and probably only do, you know, do something like, even if you did the, um, like the Knob Creek, the Rider's Tears and the Lagavulin, you know, three, three things that are quite different from each other. Yeah. Just so there's, you know, cause it's pretty hard. Like I think I would struggle to to pull out the difference between Octomore, well, probably not all the Octomore, but the like the Port Charlotte and the yeah. the Lagavulin mixed in with all that other stuff can be quite 
Yeah, but it's it's blended. It's blended enough where it's it is it is extremely. It's just fine on the nose and more than. More than tasty. Awesome. So this was a success. I'm glad you. I'm glad you got there, dude. Yeah, God, it was a, it was a, it was a <laughs> bit of a struggle. I'm glad I woke up in time. I'm 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 apologizing apologizing profusely to everybody that uh, <laughs> that I was late. I apologize to you for for messing up the timing, but that's all good. That doesn't bother me. Yeah. Um. But uh, yeah, the next the next one will be a bit a bit better planned out. Um. Maybe I won't do. Uh, maybe next time I'm streaming, I won't do a happy hour that day. Uh, <laughs> I was, I was, I was so tired. I was like, Oh, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna take a little, little nap. I'll set my alarm. <laughs> I'll wake up. No. Oh, that's hilarious. So, all right. Well, Jesse, uh, I really appreciate you, um, you know, uh, coming on and, uh, hanging out. My pleasure, dude. Always and, a pleasure. Yeah. And like I said, we gotta, we gotta do like more of these, uh, uh, collaborations uh, amongst everyone in the in the in the in the whiskey verse. So, yeah, it's lots of fun, man. And it's, yeah. I mean, it's a little silver lining on all the the craziness that's going on right now. As we're yeah, exactly you know, discovering right? more of this stuff, it's cool, very cool. Especially for those of us that are kind of isolated and don't have uh, you know a lot of whiskey friends just down the road or whatever. Yeah, exactly. It's and you times. know, you don't want you don't want to uh, you know go to someone's house or they don't want to come to your house, right? So. No, I wish I had, na- I had, uh, well, I have neighbors, but it's not like we can just like, you know, knock on each other's doors and hang out. Like we have to still maintain a distance, but like, like, a <laughs> if I, like I was in a house, right. And my neighbors uh, have, uh, you know, the yard and it's just like, okay, well you sit, you know, seven feet over there and I'll sit over here and we'll have a drink and talk. Uh, it doesn't quite work that way in an apartment building, but. Yeah. Uh, oh, I just mean in, in, in general, dude, like even without the COVID situation, I don't really have friends here that. Mm. Or, um, ah, into whiskey. yeah so you know being forced to jump online well not forced but having the opportunity to be able to do stuff like this more is, is really nice for me because i never get to talk you know whiskey geekery all in right. my normal day-to-day life it's cool it's good fun man all right very good well th- appreciate it and we'll like i said we'll do it we'll do uh we'll do it more uh your channel next time um we'll just, yeah, we'll, dude. Just, we'll just keep on going back and forth <laughs> <laughs> i'll figure out a way to uh i'll figure out a way to get people involved in it to like get you maybe maybe i uh get some stuff laid down and get some stuff aged and then i'll um get you some samples and then we can play that way uh i, 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 would, I, I wouldn't take it honestly i wouldn't take the chance you don't okay. think they'd get to you i don't think they'd get to me okay yeah right. well I'll i mean keep, they, they... i'll keep plotting <laughs> well i appreciate it man um so yeah so uh for anyone still watching and uh watching on replay that uh are still sticking around um jesse plug plug your plug your shit if you haven't already um cool. yeah uh from jesse from stiller and chase the craft you can find everything that i've got at chase the beautiful and um yeah so with that we'll we'll see you guys later and hope you guys enjoyed this uh this blend little blending experiment And uh, if you liked it, leave a comment and we might do more of it. In the meantime, cheers. See you guys. Cheers.